Hi, I'm Conrad Fisher, and we're back to our next section. And our next section in section 10 of endocrinology is chapter 4, the adrenal cortex. Now, the adrenal cortex is very difficult because the different steps in the adrenal cortex and the production of these hormones have a lot of different numbers and a lot of different names, and they are really annoying. Uh, it, uh, it would be like being on a highway, and every time there's an exit from the highway, somebody changes the name of the highway. So the difficulty here is before we get to any of the intervening steps, let's look at the different things here, okay? And, well, the glomerulosa from the outside. Well, the glomerulosa from the outside, let's see. As we go from the outside, we have mostly salt. So salt here on the outside, around the outside, around the outside, and it's salty. Well, as we go in deeper in there, we're going to go from salt on the outside to sugar on the inside. And all the way on the inside, we're going to find sex. Sex hormones, yes. And that's the point. The deeper it goes, the sweeter it gets inside the adrenal cortex. On the outside, it's salty. Inside, it's sugary. And all the way on the inside is androgens and adrenal sex hormones. Now, this part here about what things are controlled by, this part here about it being controlled by angiotensin II and potassium is a massive point because the fact that the zona glomerulosa is controlled by angiotensin II and by potassium is a massively important fact. It is a critically indispensable important fact to know that basically your aldosterone is not controlled by the pituitary. Your aldosterone here in the glomerulosa, see where it says aldosterone in the glomerulosa? It's not controlled by the pituitary. This is an extraordinarily important point. There is always a question on step one along the order of if you have your head cut off, why doesn't your blood pressure go down? If you have your pituitary sectioned, how come you don't die? And the answer is here in the top, that the zona glomerulosa is not controlled by ACTH. That's our biggest thing. Now, as we go under here, we see that the fasciculata and the reticularis are controlled by ACTH. And that's why the C in the ACTH is adrenocorticotrophic hormone. Adrenocortico. Why? Because it controls cortisol. Now, the adrenal androgens also are controlled by the pituitary. But this dual control of even just these three zones is amazingly important. Think about the adrenal glands. They're tiny. They're tiny. Between the two adrenal glands, we're not even talking about an ounce. Between the both of them, plunked on top of your kidneys. They're minuscule, not even an ounce. And yet, they're divided up into four categories. Glomerulosa, fasciculata, reticularis, and the medulla underneath, which is in another chapter. And you have three zones, if you include, of control, glomerulosa under aldosterona, making aldosterona under control of angiotensin II, fasciculata reticularis under ACTH, and the medulla, which is under the control of blood pressure. All in this one tiny organ? Wow. Man. It's amazing, really. It's amazing. We're in the amazing business. Now, this line down here where it says LH has no effect, LH only controls your gonads. It, LH only controls the part of the androgens that are made lower. Lower hormones? All right, all right, all right. LH luteinizing hormones. Okay, okay, okay. But it only controls lower. Down in your ovaries and your testicles. Now, next point here. Now, let's say it all again. The zona glomerulosa. Basically, it means this. The words glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis are crappy words. Glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis are leftovers from over 100 years ago 
when we knew the microscopic structure of these portions of the gland before we knew what they made. Micro appearances, histologic appearance is older than knowing endocrine function. We had things on slides almost 200 years ago, but certainly in the 1840s. We had microscopes in histology in the 1840s, but we didn't know about the first hormone until, guess what, 1908, secretin. Secretin was described only just past 100 years now. So secretin, as the, most, as the earliest of all the hormones, is only 100 years old. But we knew that these things, that it looked like glomeruli. And so we called it glomerulosa. Oh, it looked like fascicles. A fascicle is a bundle. A bundle. Bundle of sticks together, a bunch of pens or pencils, it's a fascicle. And a reticulum, a reticulum is an expensive word for net-like. So we knew that microscopically this looked like glomeruli or fascicles or bundles or a reticulum, a net, long before we knew that there was, in fact, the function of it. Now, what we should have done is once we knew the function, we should have changed it from zona glomerulosa to zona aldosterona. But that would have been too logical. We should have changed it from zona fasciculata to zona cortisola. And uh, the reticularis, which makes the sex hormones, should have made it from zona reticularis to zona sexulosa, or adrenal gland sex hormones. So the names, glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis have no relationship to function. Wow. So what do we have in mineralocorticoid? You know, when I was in med medical school, I used to go, yeah, aldosterone, I know what that is, but what's this mineralo stuff? Yeah, aldosterone, yeah, I understand that. Aldosterone makes you retain sodium and excrete hydrogen ions. Aldosterone makes you retain sodium and excrete potassium. Yeah, I get that, but what's this mineralo stuff? What's the mineral? Well, the mineral is sodium. Yeah, why don't you say that? Do you speak the English language? Why do we got to say that? Why don't you call it aldosterosteroid or aldocorticoid? So now we got a zona glomerulosa where the glomerulus has nothing to do with the kidney, but it's a glomerulosa, but it makes aldosterone. Right, it's a glomerulosa, but it makes aldosterone. And it's a mineralocorticoid, but it makes aldosterone. So out of one zone in the adrenal, we got three different names, mineralocorticoid, aldosterone, glomerulosa. So what happens when you lose the mineralocorticoid? Now remember here, mineralocorticoid makes you retain sodium. Oh no, a fourth name? First it's the glomerulosa, which has nothing to do with a glomerulus, which makes the mineralocorticoid, which is called aldosterone, but it's really all about the sodium. Forget it. I'd rather fail than have to learn this. Well, we can't retain the sodium, so we're going to lose it. Well, what happens when we lose salt? With the salt goes the water, because when it's salty, just like a pretzel takes all the water out of your mouth, with the salt goes the agua. So when I lose salt and I lose water, I lose volume. And when I lose volume, I'm going to lose pressure. So does that mean that if you retain salt and water, you have hypertension? And if you lose salt and water, you have hypotension? Yep. -er. What's the difference between low blood pressure and shock? You see these? Between low blood pressure and shock? What's the difference between those, between low blood pressure and shock? I thought shock was low blood pressure. <coughs> well, uh, Maybe. You know what I don't like about these videos? You see, if you understand everything, then you're not going to need me. And who, who's going to want me? I mean, you know, I'll be another medical school guy, and then you're going to understand it by the end of the tape, and then and I'm going to become unimportant. You won't need me. So the thing is, what's the difference between low blood pressure and shock? Uh, severity. Shock just means really low blood pressure. What's the difference between low blood pressure and shock? And the answer is the degree. The degree of it, okay? The degree of it. Now, you notice here we get even worse. And what's worse than shock? Man, what is worse than shock? Oh, death. 
Now, you like that one here? Let's say it again in another word. Without it, you die, which is the same thing as saying it's required for survival. Well, why don't we say the same thing 47 times? Mineralocorticoid is aldosterone. The aldosterone makes you retain sodium and water. Without the sodium and water, you lose sodium and water. I like that one. You mean without the sodium and water, I lose the sodium and water. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know what it is? It's the department, the redundancy department. Without the salt and water, you get hypotensive. And when it's really bad hypotensive, we call that shock. And when the shock is extremely bad, we call that death. And when we, they have death, it means you didn't survive. I like that. Now, the fasciculata and reticularis. Fasciculata, fasciculata and reticularis. Now, the absence of these glucocorticoids, cortisol. Now, glucocorticoid controls predominantly glucose. The glucocorticoid predominantly controls oh, glucose. That's a good name for it. Hey, hey it's better than mineralocorticoid. At least the word actually is in there, you know what I mean? Gluco and my corticoid. There we go. So the thing is, is that glucocorticoids make you so sweet. Oh my goodness. Yes, it controls the levels of sugar in your body. Now, here's the other part of this. Circulatory failure without cortisol and they end up having catecholamines don't have their same effect. So they don't have the same effect because there's a permissive effect, permissive effect. There's a permissive effect of cortisol on the catecholamines. The cortisol makes the catecholamines have an increased effect and maintain your blood pressure. Good. Next thing, inability to, inability to readily mobilize energy. And your energy basically is sugar and fat. Sugar and fat, you know what this means? It means you are meant to have baklava. That is it. We are genetically designed. Do you know that in your adrenal glands right now is a nice, tasty bird's nest, nice, tasty baklava in your adrenals? Ready? <laughs> Anytime you want a piece of baklava, just squeeze your adrenals. And with God, that proves, that proves that God made us to have pastry. Or if you're an agnostic or an atheist, infinite amounts of nothingness made us to have pastry and a Danish. What is it? It's a cheese Danish. Sugar, fat, together, instant energy. Mmm, <gasps> corticotropin releasing hormone comes out of my head every morning when I'm lying in bed. Corticotropin releasing hormone squirts out of my lobes. Oh, it starts to feed me from my head into my toes. Woke up, fell out of bed. Corticotropin increasing hormone came out of my head, went my way downstairs and had a cup and squeezed my adrenals and woke me up. I never did that before. I did that special for you. I just made that up on the spot. Yes, because I'm special. And this is education. And that makes this special education. And that is that did you know that every morning, half an hour before you wake up, that that guy you're with that should every once in a while get out of bed and make the coffee for you, that you have CRH in your own hypothalamus that wakes up before you do, just like the coffee pot timer that you could set from the night before, and sends a signal out of the center of your brain to your pituitary to send the ACTH down to your adrenal glands, which cause your adrenal glands to get a squeeze, for a glucocorticoid. The glucocorticoid goes throughout your entire body and raises your glucose and free fatty acid levels so you have breakfast in bed. Pancakes with butter and extra syrup. Tasty. Mm -mm -mm. And that's what glucocorticoids are. Now, you see this thing where it says here, under normal living conditions? I hope you know what that means because <laughs> I don't know what it means. You know. The normal living conditions. Well, normal living conditions means that if you actually ate every four or six hours, you wouldn't actually need cortisol. But you see where it says this? With stress, severe uh, hypo uh, okay, uh, hypoglycemia, it means that if I didn't have adrenals, I'd probably die instantly. Because if I didn't have adrenals, it means no nine-hour classes followed by eight hours of videotaping. It means that basically, 
My adrenal glands make me who I am. I feel like I'm giving a commencement address. I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'd like to make, thank all the people and all the things that made me what I am today. I'd especially like to thank my zona fasciculata for allowing me to live without meals, for allowing me to deal with stress, for always being there for me. Middle of the night I wake up, I'm anxious, my fasciculata is there feeding me glucose, free fatty acids. Okay, okay, it breaks down proteins a little bit, but you can't have everything. You know, all relationships have problems. So my zona fasciculata, for me, makes me who I am because it allows me, ready, I can skip meals. I mean, the fasciculata is like the entire New York City zone. Skip meals, have an extra hour, half hour free, visit three stores, read two books, write five business propositions, uh, digest and recopy 16 articles. If you didn't have a zona fasciculata, you couldn't skip meals. Your sugar levels would go dangerously low. You wouldn't die without the fasciculata, but you would be tired and out of gas almost the entire time. Frankly, the zona fasciculata is having the cheese danish in the bag that allows you to keep going during the day and eat while you're walking down the street. Now, the medulla is different. Our next slide here, the medulla, first of all, it's going to be in a separate chapter. The second thing is, is that the reason you don't need the medulla is because the medulla it all makes mostly epinephrine. And that's the other thing here, is that the medulla making mostly epinephrine, it, it doesn't take into account the fact if this is a neuron and this is the end point of the neuron, is that most of the norepinephrine comes out of the neurons. Synapses. Norepinephrine comes out of the synapses, and norepinephrine is our alpha effect, and norepinephrine comes out of synapses. So the reason I can live without my medulla is because the medulla makes mostly epinephrine and what maintains my blood pressure a lot is aldosterone in the long term and norepinephrine from synapses in the short term.